Well guys, it's official. Birmingham City are back where they belong in the Premier League. And if we take a look, just for confirmation, there we go. Promotion, 101 points, 43 games, 3 games to go. And it was at the expense of our old rivals Nottingham Forest that we clinched promotion. A nice 3-0 win there. So if we take a look at where we've been since the last episode... We've been on a great run in the championship. Um, absolutely dominating teams again. We're, we're, we're still letting in every now and then, but it's been great. Run's been fantastic. Same formation as usual. We've made a, a slight tweak because I think I, I, I realised that what I'd done is was a little counterproductive. When I got the team to play quite compact and bring you down... I'd also got them on uh, high pressing, and that to me that sounded a bit counterproductive. That that they were pulling back for the regrouping for the counters, but then I also wanted them to press quite quite intently. You know, it was quite intense, so it kind of confused the players, and it probably caused a lot of issues. But what we are going to do now is we're just going to play the game against Derby. This should be the game. That confirms us as champions. I can't believe we haven't been confirmed as champions with 101 points already. That is mental. Um, but if we do get that, what I'll do then is we'll play this game. We'll play the next two games just off off screen. Um, and then we'll come back for the end of season review. Just to see who's done what. Who's been the best player. Who the fans think have been the best player. Um, and stuff like that. If we take a look at the club vision... Just to see what the, the, the board think of me now. I am basically untouchable. I could go in there and tell them all to F off basically. And they, they won't be able to say anything. Um, yeah, fantastic. Reach the playoffs by 22-23. That's done mate, don't worry about that. Top half, smashed it. Absolutely smashed it. So let's see if, if we just have a quick look at the tactics now. Who, what we're going to play against Derby. You can see that most of the team are knackered. Um, what I'm going to do is do a quick switcheroo because what I should have done is done this when I wasn't recording I'll be honest I got a little excited wanted to get this one recorded and done um, yeah so what we'll do we'll just have a quick swap around and what I have done um, is I've been watching Zealand on his uh, set pieces and stuff like that and just, just what you need to do to set up for set pieces to get a, a few more goals. So hopefully we can see that coming to affect this, this, this game against Derby. I mean, Derby were the second team that we played that, that beat us. It was Nottingham Forest first and then straight after Derby. So hopefully we can gain a bit of revenge against them here. I wouldn't mind absolutely pummeling them to make it a title party. Let's see what we can do. Uh, yeah, don't really care. Let's go, guys. I've been really happy this season, the way that it's gone. I wasn't expecting to win the title. Definitely not when I started the series. I, I thought that Birmingham had a decent squad. I'll be honest, I didn't expect them to be anywhere near the top half. Not after the recent showings in real life. I'm hoping that it's because of my tactics. John Terrell over the ball. Oof, just over. Um, and my shrewd signings in terms of loan signings. But we will wait and see. In terms of loan signings, actually, I know that we were talking about uh, Ethan Lard, Curtis Jones and Aaron Connolly coming back. Uh, it's 1-0 to Derby. Uh, we, we work so much on set pieces in between the episodes. Uh, <laughs> and it's come back. It's backfired on us, unfortunately. Uh, we can get this, boys. Come on. No pressure. Um, but yeah, in terms of loan signings, we have managed to confirm and get back Ethan Lard, Curtis Jones and Aaron Connolly for next season, which will be great, because um, they're only going to get better and better, still young. Lard and Curtis Jones are already Premier League quality. I, I think Aaron Connolly's just, just about to come into Premier League quality, to be honest, but he's a very good player. Um, the rest of the team, I, I have... Promised a few players contracts with the premise that they'll get it. But really, I had my fingers crossed behind my back. Because what I'm going to do 
As soon as the season's finished, they're all going up on the transfer market. We are getting a new team. Um, so far, this has been an awful game. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go around and swap my tactics. And swap a few players around. It may be just because of the pure fact that half my team are out. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to bring in Curtis Jones. And Curtis Jones has been playing as Mazala for me for the last few games. He's very effective there. The first few games that I've, I've played with him, I tried him in a few um, positions. We had him as an inverted winger, inside forward. And I know that we kind of settled on him as the advanced playmaker. But when you've got Crowley and uh, Imbulla there, you don't really need an extra one. And Curtis Jones is just great as a Mazala. I'm going to have to go very attacking. I don't know what's going on there. It's almost like the new. Derby once again getting one us, over on us. Total parade has been ruined. Cheers, mate. Kids are crying. Thank you. I'm going to thrash my arms here. It wasn't good enough. I cannot believe that. It's almost like the new. Almost like the new. Oh, and Brentford drew. That should. Oh, no. Six points. But we've got 17 goal difference. I was about to say that that should um, confirm us as champions. It basically is. We're champions in waiting. Champions in waiting. Um, that was dreadful. Can't believe it. After such a good run. And we lose again to Derby. <laughs> Derby and Nottingham Forest. It's something about the East Midlands that we just don't like. Being from the, you know, being from the West. I don't know what it is. West versus East. But we're losing. <sighs> okay, guys. So, um, <laughs> change of plan, I guess. We're going to have to come back for Cardiff. Yeah, we're definitely going to have to come back for Cardiff just to see if we can, if, if we can get the title clinch there. I wouldn't mind it. I was hoping to have a end to season review. It's going to be a long video. It's, yeah, it's going to have to be a long video because what I'm going to have to do, I'm going to have to play with Cardiff now. Play against Cardiff. Um, hopefully take out the frustration on Cardiff. Maybe beat them 4 or 5 nil. If not, a few more lads are going to go on the transfer market, to be honest. The players that I'm looking to probably sell and who I've told I'll give no contracts to, is Imbulla. Um, he's okay for the championship, three star. He's not getting any younger, 28. Hasn't played as many games as I thought he would. I thought he'd be a you know a regular starter. He's played a few games. You know, he's played 29 games, not too bad, but I expected more. Uh, John Terrell as well. Uh, he's, he's, he's one who's going. Again, three star. He's only 26, but I could rather do with the, the money. To be honest, I'm not going to get a lot for him, but he's just taking up wages. Harley Dean, obviously, is going to go. Um, San Jose, I'm going to keep, but he's, again, one that, that's... I'm probably going to look to replace. He's probably going to be my backup centre-back. Um, yeah, Alex Martinez, again, probably going to go. Because he's 30. Pedersen, I'll keep. Because he's really impressed me throughout the season. Really impressed me. Ben Pearson as well. He's a new newcomer. Um, and he's already played 20. That can't be 27 for us, can he? No, he's played 8 for us. Ignore me. It's a little bit of a brain fart there, thinking bloody hell. Uh, Jonathan Leco, he, he's going to be a regular start for me, definitely. I cannot keep him out of the squad. He's got four-star potential ability, so he's going to grow. But if you just look at those stats, season stats, 16 goals, 4 assists in 28 games, only 7 of them are off the, the bench. So only 21 starts and he's got that, that output. Fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Yaya Toure, can't wait to bin him. He's currently on a 3.9 in training, so in mentoring players has been pointless. Absolutely pointless. Um... I'm trying to think who was the one that... I, I promised someone else as well. A new contract. I can't quite remember who. It wasn't Nicholas Cruiser. Jeremy Bella. That was the one. Jeremy Bella. Again, 28. 4 million. 
not getting any younger, free star, good backup, but he wants a new contract and I reckon he's gonna want about thirty grand. So sorry mate. Get looking for a new club shortly. You're out. You're fired. And with that guys, what I'll do, um we'll cut it here, we'll come back for the Cardiff game. I'm just gonna go and maybe have a little cry. Because once again, title parade has been ruined. Cheers, guys. Played very well. Jonathan Lecco, I've talked you up and you got a 6.3. Aaron Connolly again, 6.3. Um, so, yeah. So, what I'll do, guys, is um, we'll come back for Cardiff. And take two of the title winning game. So, now we're against Cardiff. I've just brought you back to this screen just to show you a couple of transfers that we have pulled in in the last uh, week or so, the last couple of weeks. So what we've done is um, we've pulled in a couple of free agents that were that were released by bigger clubs. So we've got um, Estine Hughes, who's a 18-year-old Welsh right back. He's not bad, um, two two star. Full back already. He'll be good as a backup. Um, probably loan him out next year, a couple of years. And he might turn into an half decent full back. If anything, we can sell him. Um, always good to have money for the cofters. We are a selling club. Even when we're in the Prem, that's what I want to do, churn them out. The second game, second game, second player that we have bought in is Jarrell Kwanzai. And he's a Scottish 18 year old centre back from Liverpool. Again, he's quite nice, a two star centre back, um, four star potential. Really nice tackling, really good jumping, six foot four. So, what I might need to do, I might play him in the cup <coughs> actually. Might as well get him some experience, either that or send him out. But again, that, that is a nice foundation. For, for his size, he can run. So that's a nice foundation. So I'm hoping that, that he turns into someone who's who's half decent and can be one of my backup centre-backs. You can also play as uh, right-back. I won't play him as right-back though. Because he's got no stats in terms of crossing and stuff like that. But yeah. Um, also, we've got uh, Callum Cissé. Cissé? Sorry. Cissé or Cissé? Kessay, I'd say. <laughs> Kessay, I'd say. See, say. Yeah. Um, he's a right back again. I'm filling the club up with right backs. Although he's also a natural centre midfielder. Box to box. Again, got really good physicals. Fantastic physicals. Um, nice mentals. And he's got, again, another good foundation to build on. Two star. 18 years old. We'll sit in my under 23s, maybe go on loan for a couple of years, and then we'll see where we go from there. He'll either be churned out for maybe two or three million, or we might come in as a backup. And the final youth prospect, in quotations, um, slash fodder, is Max Robson. And he's a 18 year old centre attacking midfielder who can also play as a centre midfielder. Not too bad on his physicals, really good mentals for his age. Not too bad on his technicals either. Again, um, good good potential like the rest of them. Um, we'll see where we go in two or three years with them. They're, they're all on two-year contracts. So I'm just going to see how they get on. They're all on like £350 a week. So it's not even going to touch the uh, wage budget. I'm trying to hide the, the, the finances at the moment. I don't really want to show my budget just yet because I, I, I want to leave it to the end of the season like a big reveal as if this is what you've been waiting for just to keep you watching um oh uh, yeah and like and subscribe obviously and all that pushy pushy but if we look at the team that i've gone for um i'm not messing around i'm definitely not messing around for this game I, i've gone all out um so if we look we've got Efridge. Pedersen, Clark Slater, San Jose and Lard, and that has been our main centre well, that has been our main defence for the 
for the season. Um, quite solid. They all know how to play with each other. We've then got Pearson, Kamara and Jones in the midfield. Nice solid three. Glenn Kamara was a four, uh, three, three and a half star advanced playmaker. Um, I don't quite know what's happened. It must have just been because we, we have lost uh, David Karanka, actually. He's just gone to Rangers. Has his brother has become the manager. Um, as soon as Atul Karanka became manager, he comes swooping straight in. And I was fine. Fine for him to let him go. Wasn't exactly a uh, fantastic assistant manager. His stats weren't the best. He was like 10s everywhere. Man management man management was 10. Um, judging players and potential was 10 as well, I believe. So it's not no real big loss. I've put an advert out. Hopefully because we're going up to the Premier League, we should be getting uh, a decent assistant manager in. Someone who knows what he's doing. I'm throwing a bit of shade there at Karanka, obviously. Um, but yeah, if we carry on, so sorry about that. We've got Ivan Sanchez, right wing. Jonathan Lecco, Jonathan Lecco left wing. And then I'm going to go for Palestri up front this this game. Aaron Connolly has been okay. The last couple of games, he's, he's been... He's kind of fell off a little bit. So he's on the bench. Um... Once again, we've had to sacrifice one of our lone players, so it's uh, Benny this time. I think we've got enough cover. I might bring Yaya Toure on for his uh, final cameo. And then I'm booting him out the door. What I have done, I've took him off a mentoring group cause, because he, he's, ju he's just a bad influence, to be honest. Look at his training. It's awful. Absolutely awful. 5.2. You're meant to be a professional, mate. Oh, what a waste. But yeah, anyway. And speaking of uh, staff, what we have... Uh, well, I've just had a quick look at trying to bring in a couple more uh, scouts. So I've, I've found this guy, Francesco Oliveira. Um, I think he's great. Also, his world knowledge will be good. Um, giving us full knowledge of well, Portuguese, Brazil, France. Because who doesn't like a bit of a uh, Portuguese youth? You know, we don't all mind it. You know, um, awkward silence there. <laughs> um, and then we have also signed. If I just have, have a look um, at our staff, where are you, Mister? Michael Murphy. That's the one. Mr. 70, I, I was going to let him retire, but I've put him on a four-year deal to be one of our scouts. Um, adaptability, judging playability and judging potential are fantastic. So, And for £550 a week, great. We can have as much tea and biscuits as he wants. Absolutely fantastic for that. You don't usually get a scout of, of this um, of this experience for that, that cheap, you know, someone who's this good. He also knows Republic of Ireland and Scotland like the back of his hand. Uh, that's due to Celtic. Um, and probably Peter, I think. Is Peter, I do not. No, Scotland. Well, ignore me. Oh, it's because he's Irish. Apologies, guys. Um, if anyone's a Peter Ed fan. Or if anyone's actually uh, Scottish. Sorry about that. You can obviously tell that my uh, geography, geographical knowledge isn't the best. I didn't take it for a GCSE. Oh, I'm just making myself look like a right fool. So let's just get on with the match because it, it's already this, this episode's already turning into what, what, what could be known as a comedy of errors, basically. Um, the first match was meant to be the... You know, the, the showing off, this is the tactic, it works, everything's fine. We've now got a new corner, set piece, throwing tactic. That all went down the uh, down the pan. Players didn't turn up. Thought, we're already up. Forget it, we're, we're already up. You know, let's, let's go, let's do a gaza. Let's go and get pissed the night before. Dentist chair. And obviously we lost 1-0. 
Um, oh, there we go. Curtis Jones. And that's what I was talking about earlier when I said that Curtis Jones was a good Mazzala. Since I've put him as Mazzala, he's scored maybe four or five goals in about ten games. So he's, he's uh, very effective in that role, which is good. And hopefully, after me giving them a proper rollicking last game, they've uh, switched back on again. It looks like it, because it looks like this is going to be an hammering, which is good. And there we go, and Watford a 1-0 up, which is even better against Brentford, because Brentford are second. So even if we lose, please don't lose, um, we will still be crown champions. I mean, a bit of a serenade out for the fans, you know, to uh, be crowned on a loss, but... Oh, there we go, 2-0. I don't think that's going to happen, guys, to be honest. It is FM. Could happen. But at 2-0, with 11 minutes gone. Now, this is game over now. Like I said, we are, we're we just going to take it out on Cardiff. We're, go we're just going to absolutely ammo. Which is good. I want us to show our ruthless streak. And there we go. And there's th there is the throwing tactic at work. What a fantastic... Looked like a work of art that was. Ivan Sanchez. Oh, Ivan Sanchez, he's about five foot six. Let me just check. Five foot seven. How has he got that? I'm not asking questions. I'll just take it. I don't think you'd ever see that in real life, but FM, you know, you do have some pretty weird things happening in the match engine. I'm not going to question. Lord knocks it over. Up the wings if Pedersen can get this and knock it back in. Pearson. To Pedersen. Lovely. Oh. And Jonathan Lecco, I know I've been talking about his stats just. In the last two or three games, he's kind of dropped off as well. Um, now, I don't know if that's just because of the calibre of team that we've been against or what, but it's not bad. Um... I'm not going to tell them that. I'm going to do a no gesture for this one. Just just carry on, guys. Let, let's carry on. Let's do it for the fans. Disappointed them last game. Um, some of you are playing for your spots in the team. Some are playing for the spots in the team. Some of you are playing to even stay with the team. So, impress me, please. Oh, almost. Jonathan Lecon nearly got that goal there that I was asking for. And I do like the fact that we're, we're in terms of fitness, because we've had a week off, we're, we're looking a lot better than we were last game. Um, yeah, it looks okay. So Lard's running up the wing. Ivan Sanchez back to Lard. Pedersen. Oh, yes. And Pedersen's getting in on the goals as well. First goal of the season. That will do. Congratulations, guys. 4-0. We are champions. Well done, Pedersen. You deserve that goal. You've played really well all season, mate. <laughs> and there's Palestri. Okay. Now it's turning into a drubbing. Now it's turning into... Can, can we do... Can we beat our record win? And I'm pretty sure it's something like 5-0 away to, to Stoke. In terms of um, goal difference. Our first game was was the biggest in you know we had um, Crowley can come on there we had Brentford and it was five three we're not going to beat that in terms of goals but what what I'm going to have to do Pedersen's knackered and it's ninety first minute so I should have paused there apologies bring on Nicholas Cruiser for maybe his last game of the no because I'll, I'll bring him on there we go and we have done it guys finally. There we go. I'm going to have to take a screenshot in a minute for the thumbnail. There we go, a screenshot. Can we zoom in a bit, guys? Or... Oh, hey! Hey! And that is lovely. Allez, 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 allez. Straight to the dressing rooms. Well done, guys. 5 0. What a way to, to finish. What a way to win the title. 
And if we can win the next game, then we can beat Reading's uh, records points, which was 106. Knowing our luck, we're going to probably lose 2 or 3-0. Because um, the team are going, definitely going to switch off tonight. We're going to go down to the boozer. Get absolutely smashed. And you all deserve it, guys. Nice one. Right, guys. Um, we'll, we'll, we will be back at the uh, end of season review. And here we are, guys. Our first ever season review for Birmingham City. So if we take a look at the new arrivals. And we just have a quick look. Um, it looks quite nice. Obviously, Yaya Toure, again, disappointing. Ben Pearson could be a bit better. Paolo Gozzi has been quite has done quite well at Burton. Um, he's already two and a half star. But if we take a look at who we've brought in, Andre Wisdom seems a shrewd signing now. 7.13 average rating for just over 700k. Fantastic. Um, all these were brought in before us. Aaron Connolly, I can't believe he's only got a 7.04, considering his output. 22 goals, 4 assists in 34 games. Absolutely fantastic. I don't even know who Oriel Soldovia is. Who is he? I don't know why I've got to say for that. Um, yeah. I don't quite know who you are, mate, to be honest. Uh, yeah. But if we just take a look. So Ethan Lard has been absolutely great. Absolutely fantastic. Um, I'm glad that we got him back. For Kundal Palestri. I've kind of slept on him in terms of noticing. However, he's got a 7.16, so I may need to bring him back if we just take a look. Yeah, he looks like a decent decent player. Although, what I am doing at the moment, guys, is um, I'm scouting Sheffield United, Newcastle, because those are the two teams so far that have been confirmed to come down. Um, I'm probably going to... I'd like to get Sanderberg, Ryan Brewster... Uh, maybe Jaden Bogle as well, <laughs> and obviously Alan St Maximin if if we've got the funds. But that ain't going to happen, is he? He's never going to come to us. So if we take a look at the season results. Uh, just while we had Jonathan Lecko seven point zero five, not bad. Really good output in terms of goals and assists for the amount of appearances he had. Considering he was out for three months at the start of the the season, he's come on really well. Um, really happy with him. So it's a look at the seasons. Um, yeah, top half expectation, final position first. Really good, A+. Plus. And we did beat Reading's total, points total in the end. Um, it was touch and go against uh, Blackburn, was it? Yeah, away to Blackburn. But it was a great... And if we take a look, it was touch and go until... And this is, this is probably the best goal I've seen in terms of assists on FM. It was fantastic. Jeremy Bella, I was going to get rid of him, but show me this. He just makes it look so easy. What an assist. What an absolute fantastic assist. It's like he's playing FIFA. But back to the uh, the results. We had three losses. All of them to East Midland sides. Derby County did the double over us. And they are 16, so it's quite embarrassing. Let's move on from that. 32 wins, really good. Um, 11 draws. What I'd, I'd like to, to change some of these draws into wins next season. Although I don't think we're going to be anywhere near the top half in the Premier League. Not unless we do a complete squad rebuild. If we have a look at the FA Cup as well. Now this, to me, is a missed opportunity. Because if we look at the FA Cup, we can see that it was to reach the quarter final. We got well, so the fourth round. We got to the quarter final. If we have a look after the quarter final, at the semi final, we'd have played Bristol City. So we'd have we'd have had a route to get it up to the final to Man City. We'd have got beat in the final, but it means we'd have probably been in Europe. So we'd have had more funds and better reputation more players that have come to us so to me that that's that's definitely a fail I'm pretty disappointed that we went out not that you know obviously I haven't stopped moaning about it <laughs> but you know uh, you know this is FM 
things happen. It happens in real life. Carabao Cup, we went out to Arsenal. Um, yeah, expected. That was when we first started. The tactic was still a bit raw. We, we still beat Fulham on penalties, which I'm quite happy about. So, nothing to moan about there in the Carabao Cup. Would have been nice to go on a, a run there, but FA Cup was definitely the one. It was definitely the one that got away. I'll never stop thinking about that. Moments to remember now. If we take a quick look, we have got a uh, biggest win, like I said, with 5 0 away to Stoke. We matched that with a 5 0 against Cardiff on the last but one day to, to clinch the title. Match to remember was the 5 2 away to Cardiff, although I'd say it was probably the 5 3 against Brentford on the first game. I think that was a better game, more end to end. Mark Roberts getting a double there before he left for Swansea. So it's almost like he knew that he was going to Swansea um, and he was just putting on a show. Like, I'll show you, I'll, I'll, beat, I'll score twice against your rivals. Get get in there with the Jacks already. No, that's, is it the Jacks? Isn't the Jacks Cardiff? Ooh. I don't quite know. I'm going to have to have a look at that one. I may have just unintentionally pissed off a load of uh, Swansea fans there. So I'm sorry about that. Goal of the season is Curtis Jones. So if you take a look at the goal of the season. Well, I still think it should have been that Sanchez one just, just because of Bella's assist. Bella's running with the ball. Crosses it to Jones, to Crowley and Wallop on the edge of the box. And it was a good goal. Really good goal. Um, I think we scored quite a few of those goals though. Nothing special about it. But yeah, Curtis Jones. I'm, I'm really happy that we've got him for next season as well. Once again, Ben Pearson getting sent off. Regular occurrence. Is it a match if Ben Pearson doesn't either get a yellow or a, a red card? Probably not. If we have a look at our finances now. We're still national. We haven't gone up in terms of reputation. I'm hoping that it goes up once we're, we're fully into the Premier League. Because um, I'd like to sign a few players. But if we look at our sponsorship um, and the annual revenue is quite nice. Glenn Kamara sold the most t-shirts. Club shirts even, sorry. Um, followed by Bella, Crowley, San Jose and Sanchez. Such a shame for the fans. Chris Bella's probably going to go. So unfortunately you're going to have to get a new shirt. And let's just take a look at how the team lined up throughout the season. This is the... Is this our best team? I wouldn't call it our best team. Um, Sunich I wouldn't put in there. And in Buller I wouldn't put in there either. I don't even know where Curtis Jones or Lecco is. But yeah. Okay, uh, if that's what FM thinks. If you can see, we were, our defence and goalkeeper you know, had a bit of a storming season. All over seven. Sanchez was on a seven as well. So quite solid. Crowley excelled. Aaron Connolly obviously excelled as well. Um, Ethan Lard with 12 assists from right back. Which goes to show that my second formation was working really well. Also got himself a couple of goals. Both of his goals were absolute stormers. San Jose with nine goals. Very nice. 43 games, not too bad. Ivan Sanchez. Ooh, that's nice. 18 assists, 11 goals. So he did play quite well. Jeremy Bello again getting in with the goals. And Aaron Connolly was our top scorer with 22 goals. So if you have a look, it's not it's not a bad squad. Um, I think those three there, under seven, are probably going to go. Sonic is already gone. Um, yeah, I'm going to keep all these here. Apart from Jake Clark Slater, he's gone. I am looking for a new centre-back. I've, I've got an eye on a new left-back as well. Um, better than Pedersen, four and a half stars from the Portuguese league. Hopefully they don't try and pull my pants down. Although it is FM, so I'm probably going to have to pay 30 million, even though he's only worth two. You know what they're like. Um, yeah, manager awards. <laughs> None. <laughs> Obviously, no one like me. <laughs> Don't worry, lads. Um, player awards, this is what we want to get to, isn't it? Fans player of the season was obviously Ethan Lard. 
He's got, he was also my player of the season. Fantastic. Again, he's scooping up the awards with a young player. Signing of the season, Andre Wisdom. I'll take that. Like I said, shrewd signing. Less than a million. Can't say better than that. Goal of the season we've already looked at. Top score we've looked at. Uh, assists we've looked at as well. But it's not bad. Um, hopefully, Aaron Connolly can bring his form into the Premier League. I'm a little worried about it. Um, I'm looking to sign another striker. Like it says, Ryan Brewster. If I can get him, um, everything's hunky dory. I think he'll be fantastic. Ethan Lard with the highest average rating. If you have a look at the awards, nothing. That's fine. I don't think anyone won anything. Record breakers. So if we take a look at this, um, Scott Hogan scoring five in a match. And then breaking his. Not breaking, sorry. And then having a cruciate ligament injury is just typical FM. Just like you thought, just, just when I thought he was going to have some form, gets injured. So you can take that with you, mate. There's your medal. Five goals in one game. Most clean sheets by a player. Neil Efridge with 18. That's nice. That is really nice, 18 in 46. Considering how the championship was and we was always letting in one or two goals towards the end, one too bad. I mean, Connolly with the most player of the matches. Yeah, expected. Uh, Christian Pedersen, again, like I was saying before in one of the previous episodes, just cannot help himself. 13 yellow cards, one red card. Even though he's got on an instruction to stay on feet, he just cannot help himself. He just likes to nibble at them. Fastest goal, Scott Hogan, and that was in the uh, one of his five goals there. And then the... I, the oldest goal scorer that we've got, which is good, because it shows that we've got a young squad, is Mikel San Jose at 31 years old, um, which is good. I'm expecting to bring in a couple of experienced heads for the Premier League, to be honest. Um, I might see if Milner's available. He seems like quite a good sign. He should be quite cheap. His wages are going to kill us, but oh, he's too good for his age. If we have a look at the history now. Yeah. Absolutely brilliant. 107 points. 73 goal difference, which is more than 20 goals above the rest of the teams. Um, we had the most goals scored, but goals against was Bournemouth, who had 25. So they only let in 25 goals in 46 matches. That is mental, considering they only finished fourth as well. Although they did get 93 points. That is probably the closest season I've ever seen in terms of points. To have f four, four sides hit over 90 points is amazing. I'd be so annoyed if I was Norwich and Bournemouth. Alright, let's go. And there we go. That, that is it, guys. Um, what I'll do now, I'm going to send the squad off for end of season. Like I'm going to party in Marbella or whatever they want to do. And then we will come back to the start of next season once I've done a, fr a few transfer signings. Um, we'll have a transfer special. Depending on how many signings we've had, um, because we're going up, um, I'm hoping that it's going to be quite a few. I expect the old team to be different, to be honest. Um, if we just take a look at the tactic, just to see who I'm expecting to go. So I'm expecting to, in terms of who I expect b back and still here, Kit Pedersen, Curtis Jones, Glenn Kamara. Benny I'm getting rid of just because I can't pronounce his name. Um, and it's getting painful now, to be honest. So yeah, if we just look at that, that, that that'll be the, the, the core of the team at the moment. Um, goalkeeper, I'd like a new goalkeeper. Sorry, Efridge, I know he's played well, but we need a cut above, to be honest, mate. You don't cut the mustard at the top. Um, Aaron Connolly will be leading the line, unless I get a better striker. Might be the backup striker. Leco again, probably going to be benched because I want better wingers. Especially in this formation. We need people that can cross and stuff like that. Ethan Lard is going to be my star player. I'm probably going to build the team around him. As well as Curtis Jones, although Curtis Jones has gone down. I don't quite understand this because he's now a free star. What is going on? Is it because I've got a new assistant manager? It could be. Could be. I've got a new assistant manager who's got a better, better um, attributes. But yeah, Imbul is gone. Alex Martinez is gone. Crowley will keep. Harley Dean's gone. John Terrell's gone. 
Wisdom I'm going to keep because he's been the fans uh, sign of the season. Cruiser I'm getting rid of. Uh, and Jeremy Bella I'm probably going to get rid of as well. So what I'll do guys, um, next episode we will have the start of the season. It will be a transfer special. As you can see there's going to be quite a lot of outgoings. Hopefully we can get rid of a few. Ben Pearson I'm on the edge about to be honest. If we just take a look at his mentals, fantastic. Physicals are okay. Um, but yeah, he just, just fouls all the time. Ten yellows, two reds already. And that two of them reds are for us. We've only had him for nine games. What's going on? Yeah, I think he's going to have to go. He's, he, he's too much of a liability, to be honest. Um, yeah, he's... He, I'll, I'll, I'll let him go. I'll see if I can get a cheeky bid in. I mean, 2.7. If I can get 2.5, there's a nice 1.5 million uh, bit of profit there. Maybe put him towards um, Brewster or Sanderberg. That'd be nice. Okay, guys, yeah. So uh, that's what's going to happen. Expect to see these players still. Hopefully, these will be all gone. A lot of them are either going to go on free transfers or they're going to just be sold out. I may get rid of a couple of my lo returning loan players as well. Um, but yeah, but if you liked the video, please like and subscribe. Um, season 2 will come in the next couple of days. So we're going to take a little long now because I'm obviously going to have to be working in the background with some transfers and stuff like that. So yeah, um, ciao for now. Bye-bye.